Hi everyone, welcome to another um, colouring tutorial. Today I'm going to be working in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly by Johanna Basford and I thought I would finish this double page. We did these in October um, with a sort of Halloween theme. These aren't going to match exactly. I'm going to use the same pencil. So these were done with polychromos. I'm going to use polychromos here um, just so it's sort of consistent across the pages. But um, I'm not going to do this sort of Halloween-y colour style because I think there's a difference. Here, um, Ivy's quite frightened. and We've got more scary images. And here we've got more homely, nice images. So I felt that there was no need to make them sort of match. So we're going to be working, I've just put a book under here because this page is quite, it's quite near the end of the book, it's quite thin so I thought I would want something to lean on so I've popped a book under to lean on and uh, we're going to start on the top bit here I think and I'm just going to come in. Now I've made a playlist um, with this page of videos in already and I would add these in and it's called Ivy Tunnel because I think she's walking through a tunnel in this part of the story so that's why I called it Tunnel. It's a little bit strange but there we go. I'm going to start colouring this while I'm wittering on. So we've got the bricks. Um, I'm going to choose hmm, slightly darker actually. I'm going to choose this colour, the um, Warm Grey 5. Oh, we're a little far away aren't we? Um, I could actually I think I'll come in more and uh, try to remember to move across as I go let's move that up like that there we go so I put find my sharpener so I thought I would put pop them all in the same playlist so um, you could if you wanted to do the whole double page you would easily find the videos if you haven't done the others you can find them so what I'm going to do with the bricks is go around the edge in a dark layer and then do less towards the middle. It's a really simple technique. There are lots of different ways to do bricks. I do have um, a stone brick tutorial um, where I a little bit more um, complex in that I don't do all the bricks the same colour. But I'm thinking for these, that's what I'm going to do. Now you could, because we've got these stars going through, and there's the big star at the end, which um, obviously you can't see now I'm zoomed in. You could do um, a sort of bright bit on the edges where the stars are. But um, I want to keep it really straightforward. And you could also vary the colour. So use a different, um, a different warm grey for each brick so they look different. And uh, in that other video, I show how I do that. I don't actually use um, polychromos. I use um, Derwent Lightfast, but it's, it's the same sort of thing, really. Um, same technique. So um, you could check that out if you want something a little bit different to this. But I just want to keep it simple today. I'm in the mood for simple. I actually am doing a picture um, at my desk um, which I started this morning because my son was here for a bit and I decided to just wait for him to go before I started recording. I uh, started a page just using um, felt tip pens. It wasn't um, a Johanna Basford page. I've never tried using pens for her pages but it was, a, um, it was just a mandala and I was just in the mood for doing something quite easy but uh, I'm now doing this page so I need to do a, I like to, with Johanna's books I don't feel like I want to use pens, there's nothing wrong with that, um, with using pens if that's what you want, but I'm not very good at using them, <clears throat> I'm not, excuse me, I'm not very um, practiced, so uh, it's not something I would want to do, I get a little bit nervous about making a mistake and also about bleed through. Now the book I'm doing, the Mandela's book, it's a fun light-hearted book that I was given by a lovely friend and uh, we're doing um, some buddy colours in there it's not something I'm going to video I will show it in my completed pages um, in fact you will have already seen it <laughs> if you've because this video is going out in July it's still June oh I've just had some post I'm very excited I'm going to stop the video and look whoops was some very disappointing junk mail but um, I knew that if I uh, didn't go and check, I would uh, be trying to rush so I could go and see what it was. That was a shame. Never mind. But um, 
anyway, so so I don't do, and the pen in the book that I'm doing the pens in, it's um, it's U U.S. Amazon paper, so it's quite thin, and the, the pens are actually going down really well on the paper. They're just my Stedler, um, <clears throat> Stedler tripless pens. They're not fine liners. They're sort of proper felt pens. And I haven't got all the colours. I've used some of them up completely, but um, I'm just using what I've got. And I've got sort of three, three pinky purples that I'm using to do a sort of limited palette. And um, they're bleeding right through the paper, but it's a single-sided book, so it's fine. And uh, I'm just having a go, really. I'm going to start a few down here. Now, this is going to take some time to complete this page all these bricks. Um, I don't know whether it'd be better for me to do it on my own but I think I will just keep talking for a little while and uh, carry on because I haven't, it's my first video of the day so I've got plenty of talk in me. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense but uh, I find as I make more videos I sort of run out of things to say or energy for talking that sort of thing although my family would laugh hilariously if I said I run out of energy for talking. I'm always talking. But uh, I do go a bit quiet in the evenings. I sort of run out of pep, <laughs> I suppose. Right, I'm just looking in the camera. Now you see that these aren't completely even and I'm really happy with that. It wasn't something that in inten intentionally did but the rocks in the cave on the wall they're not going to be completely even and matching if you want to do that you absolutely can but I'm quite happy with them looking a little bit different um, it would seem more I wouldn't say natural for want of a better word so uh, I'm fine but of course it would also look more natural if they weren't all the same color and you could switch about your colors I find that using the same pencil all the time is relaxing and um, easy and if you keep switching you have to keep thinking about what I'm going to use next try and make it look random but not too placed in a random pattern if you know what I mean you're not going to go um, light dark light dark light dark because then it looks like you've got a sort of um, you know it's a bit too contrived so uh, it's uh, it can be a little um, an interesting oh I can't move my book along as much as I wanted. There we go. I have to put that underneath my pencil tin. That's okay. So if you've only got a limited set of polychromos you can easily still colour along with this one because we're not going to be using a big range of colours. We haven't got a lot of different things to do. <clears throat> oh, got an itchy leg. Excuse me. Oh, oh you know sometimes when it's just you can't ignore it. Oh, that's better. It's like something was biting. It wasn't. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, dear. But uh, I don't normally record in the afternoon that much, but it's afternoon today. Um, it's, um, it's because if I do it in the morning, I sort of edit in the afternoon. But uh, my son was home this morning, and uh, he was doing... He, I had to pop out. I actually had to pick up my husband's prescription and um, I wanted to pop into the deli, drop something off at the charity shop, post a letter, you know, lots of little bits and bobs. So I thought I'd just do it while he was here. Um, he was studying, he didn't need my help. And uh, so I think he's quite happy for me to disappear and stop nagging him for a little while. <laughs> so I popped out, I was only out an hour or so, and I came back and just checked he was okay and if he needed anything, but he was fine. Um, <clears throat> He was just um, planning his revision for the weekend and things like that. And uh, so uh, that was interesting. I popped into town. The um, I went into the deli and the chap's business is not doing very well. But uh, I bought a few things. Um, I just hope they manage to survive. It's a difficult time at the minute. Um, shops like that one where they sell quite expensive items you know it's the sort of thing that people will cut down on you have to make a special journey to 
go and get it rather than just picking something up at the supermarket if you have to pay to park drive and all that sort of thing it's really tricky but i try really hard to support local shops because um i like them and i like that particular shop the um chap who works there is lovely and the lady who owns it is also lovely so uh try to uh support them as much as i can and uh Yes, what else did I do? I uh, yeah, I picked up my husband's prescription. There was only a queue of three people in the chemist, so that wasn't too um, bad. Sometimes it's really long. If you go in first thing, it's a really long queue. So uh, I think I timed it a bit better because I had to go in later because um, I had to the charity shop I drop off stuff in normally doesn't isn't ready until ten. But I actually went somewhere else, and they have. Um, bags that you can fill up with things so I helped myself to a few of those and thought if I drop things off there and use their bags because I'm running out of bags so that was good and uh, I'm hoping to have a lot more stuff to get rid of but we'll see um, and I completely forgot to post my letter and I got to the door and went oh so I said to my son as I came in I'm just going to drop off my shopping and I'm going straight back out to the post box. We've got one up the hill, which is five minutes walk away or less. It's sort of five minutes there and back, you know, together, a few minutes. Um, it takes, I always joke, that it takes longer to wait at the traffic lights to cross the big main road at the top than it does to actually do all the walking. It's, uh, it's a very quick. Probably took me a bit longer because I was a bit, I wasn't so fast because I've been walking around town. But um, got all my jobs done anyway, which was useful and uh, I used to go to town every day but uh, I sort of got out of the habit of it when we were having to stay in and although we were allowed to do exercise we we decided to sort of stay in most of the time we used to do exercise in the house instead and uh, I sort of got out of the habit of going out every day I'm also always quite have a lot to do particularly this week I seem to have loads to do but I'm hoping I can sort of catch up with a few jobs over the weekend and then uh, be okay I've made a couple of phone calls today and I'm expecting a call back um, by one person but it may or may not be soon and um, the other one I called and their answer phone said they were on holiday until Monday. I'd sent them an email inquiry and they hadn't responded, so I was chasing it up, but I thought, okay, I won't bother leaving a message because I'll wait till sort of Tuesday, Wednesday, give them a chance to catch up after their holiday. Sounds nice, a little holiday. They probably go this time, but it's a bit cheaper now because when the schools have broken up, as I said, I'm saying now because this is being recorded before schools have broken up. When the video goes out, it'll be the school holidays. Once school holidays start, um, the cost of holidays is much more expensive because holiday companies know that lots of people have to take their holidays in the school hot term. They can't do it in term time. So uh, they put their prices up. But it um, makes some people quite cross. It's it's tricky. I mean, the thing is, the school holidays are also the hottest time of the year. So it isn't necessarily just people who have families that want to uh, have holidays. And the sun's just come out. I'm not sure if it's going to be a nuisance. But I shall carry on and hope that it's okay. I've got my lamp on because it was very, very cloudy. My son actually took a Mac. And for a teenager to take a Mac, you know, it must be quite um, risky weather. <laughs> But um, he, uh, I think he wore it actually, um, but he might shove it in his bag if it gets too hot. But I'm not sure what, he's got maths this afternoon. He said that some, um, some classrooms are quite cold and some are quite warm. I'm just going to push along a little bit more. There we go, so I don't forget where I'm at. I'm going to sharpen again. And... Uh, So I didn't walk along the canal today. I was in a hurry. I wanted to be back for my boy. So uh, 
the canal isn't necessarily longer but it feels longer so it to get to the shop I wanted to go to I needed to sort of be up on the main road anyway so I just went along the road and sometimes it's quite interesting to go along the road different route to have a look at what's going on in the houses if anything's up for sale or anyone's having any work done what the gardens are looking like and things like that but uh, there was nothing very exciting going on which was a bit disappointing they are doing some um, sewer work which is yeah necessary um, and um, that was making an awful lot of noise and I felt a little bit sorry for the people who were living near that um, it's in the supermarket car park they're, uh, they're doing the sewers so there was a queue to get into the supermarket and I was surprised because that supermarket's quite expensive it's a waitrose which is quite expensive and I suspect they're finding customers aren't buying from them so often but because there's less parking spaces because of the sewer works, then it may just be that people were queuing because there were less spaces. Or sometimes if someone's manoeuvring to park just near the entrance, then it just holds people up a little bit. It looked fairly busy, though. And actually, we shop there. My husband always says, I earn enough. I want to shop there. It's a much nicer shop. The food's better, etc. So uh, I leave it up to him, you know. He doesn't like shopping our other big supermarket that's close enough to be worth shopping in. You know, you can drive further for others. The aisles are very narrow and tall and it's quite claustrophobic. I find it quite uncomfortable. I'm OK in there when it's quiet, but if it's crowded, I find it really difficult. I have before um, walked out because I just couldn't bear it. You know, I'm not normally like that, but sometimes it's just, oh can't bear it. Now I'm going to do the star next so we'll do that. Um, let's just pop that pencil down and have a little think because we've got all these stars to do and I'd like them to look sort of goldish but I don't want to do too many layers of different colours because um, we haven't got a lot of space here. So I'm going to show you what I'd like to do is all the stars at the same time. So I'm going to move across. Oh, I'm going to come out and I hope you're going to be able to see okay. Let's move the book again. Oh, there we go. I'll come in as close as I can. Um, yeah, I think that's right. I'm struggling to see. I've got writing over this bit. The bit of my screen that's there has got writing over, but I think we're okay. I'm not going to do these bits yet. I'm going to do this. Sorry, you might want to know what colour I'm using, mightn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Bistra, 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 I don't know. And I'm going to do just a line around the outside of the star. And I'm going to do the same on the other. I'm not going to do the dots or these lines. I'm just going to do around the edge. Now you could do this in a, now this I'm going to go I'm going to sharpen and I'm just going to go over the black line with this. Okay, so it's going to be a really thin, if I can, line. Um, you could just use the sparkly gold pen or a gold pen or a yellow pencil if you don't want to do anything too intricate. This is going to be quite simple though. That's quite fun drawing the star shapes. like this sort of angular. I wouldn't be able to do it myself freehand and get anything that looked any good. I mean I know Johanna's are a little bit wobbly but mine would be yeah. Anyway <laughs> I used to make these by doing a one triangle and then another one on top of each other at a 90 degree or a 180 degree angle. I don't know. But uh, not like this, not just freehand, which is how I think she does them. Oh, that one's a bit splodgy, but never mind. So I don't know if any of you guys are going on holiday in the summer or whether you traditionally do summer holidays. Uh, we haven't been for a very long time. Um, I can't remember what year it was that we went, but we're fine. We don't tend to uh, go. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to move on to green gold. Oh. So here we are, green gold. Um, I 
I considered doing the um, oh sorry the brown ochre but I think we'll jump straight to green gold now with this over the top and a bit more now I'm going to make this fairly thick um, because this is a big style on the little ones we won't be doing it quite so thick because we're not doing too many different colours so we need to start sort of coming in a bit maybe a bit more even like that oops and then maybe just a gentle bit all around so that we can blend it into the next colour there we go and we're going to do the same with the little stars I'm going to go over the brown and just it'll come in a bit because I won't be going over the black line so much just inside the brown line it's a little bit difficult to get it exactly precise but I'm not too worried and it's fun we've still got this sort of um, movement back and forth to do which I find very fun now for the dark tunnel I'm having a little think I'm thinking you could do it with a black Posca make it really black um, I don't the black Poscas don't bleed through um, this paper if you're careful I've used one in um, my other copy of Ivy and it was absolutely fine but I don't think we'd use black I think we'll do something a little bit different um, um, just because if you think about We've got these shiny stars, so where the stars are, it'll be a little bit lighter. I'm going to do all these circles in this green gold, just because I think if you need a cheats gold, where you haven't got space to do layers or you just don't feel like it, this is a great shade. I really like it. I think it's just gold. I don't. I don't see why it's called green gold. For me, it's gold. So we'll just use that through. And. I think I'm going to use it on these bits. Can you see them all? Yeah. On the but on the very edge, so not all the way through. But my pencil isn't very sharp, so it's doing almost all of it. Just all the way around. And my son was off to do a maths lesson this afternoon. He just has a one and a half hour maths lesson on a Friday. So I'm choosing my next colour, which is why I'm thinking. I'm going to use the Naples yellow and this will be my last colour. I'm not doing any more on these or the little circles. We're just merely doing the stars. I'm going to go over what we've got. I might change my mind, having said that very confidently. But we're going to go over the star, bring in towards the middle, just leave a little white gap to make it look slightly shiny. Let's just brush that off. Sorry for that clatter. There we go. And then with these, I'm going to go around again. I'm going to try and leave a white bit in the middle, but it's going to be very tricky to see. I'm just going to do my best. Just put a bit of yellow in there. Now, I am tempted to uh, make these look more sparkly by putting some glitter pen around the outside. I might do that. I haven't got one in here. Oh, I have. Hmm. I have a think as we go. We've still got the, uh, the backgroundy bit to do. Now, the background, yeah, it's a little bit daunting, but uh, hopefully we can make it easy-ish. I'm not going to pretend it's dead easy. As I say, you can use a black Posca. I would actually be tempted to use a blue pen. I'm going to do it blue, not black. Just because we've got our grey um, rocks and I think having a black is going to be a little bit stark, perhaps is the word. So I'm going to start with a dark indigo. Whoops. And apparently I'm going to drop it. Now, I'm going to start with the edge you have a look along you'll see in between each brick there's a gap and I'm going to fill that gap in a solid dark indigo colour 
and I'm just going to gently work around the edge doing that first so that it's it's nice and simple just the very edge this lead feels wobbly it's unusual for polychromos to go wobbly um, now this bit the dark layer along here layer it up now we want to fade it quite quickly because we've got the star right there so I'm going to do that okay now I'm going to move down the side can you see there you are and do the same thing so a really dark layer here and then quickly fade it like that and now here and here and we'll work back along the bottom just filling in these little gaps now you could fill these in as cement but I feel that they're gaps between the bricks so it just depends how you interpret the picture if you wanted to do them as cement you might want them a different colour compared with the sort of background of this bit it's completely up to you now we've got this bit so we're going to do oops that bit first we'll do similar again a dark line like that and then quickly fade like that and across here can you see nope <laughs> down here look and then just gently Fade in. I'm just taking it into the corner. Okay, we don't need that. So now we've got our next sort of bit to do. I'm just going to zoom out a touch so that we're definitely in shot. And I'm going in between the bricks here. And I'm not going to press quite as hard. I want to cover all the white still. And I'm going to think about actually going around the edge of here. And I'm going to do the same as I did right on the edge and just sort of fade it out a little bit. And uh, I'm trying to think of what colour to use next. Because I'm thinking, you know, it would be quite dark in the cave, but the stars will certainly light it. in that bit down here bit up here so just trying to keep it darker against the stones but if it isn't dark enough for you once you're done, you can come back and add more. So uh, it's fine. Don't need to worry too much. And if you're feeling like you don't want it to be too dark, then don't make it too dark. As I say, you can always come back after if you're not happy. I'm just going to fill in those little bits. Trying to fill them in solidly without making them quite as dark as the top. Sorry, being zoomed out means you can't necessarily see quite so well, but I hope you can get the impression it's really not. A lot of it is just the same over and over, so hopefully there's enough here for you to go on. Fill in that bit and that bit. So, um, oh, sun's back out again. Yes, yeah, so my son has maths this afternoon. Him and his brother both have maths together. I think, I'm not sure if there's two math sets or one for them further maths. But um, they, they, oh, they were telling me they had a sort of panel type interview. Um, well, my one boy, he's, um, he's got social anxiety. I think it was lucky he didn't know about this before he did it. And basically they were talking about them about their choice to do further maths and checking that they were okay to do it. So um, they sat in this office with the head of department and their two maths teachers 
and they were sort of cross-examined and he said it was really scary. His brother said, oh, it's fine. His brother's, his brother, they're just so different. His brother's much more laid back about that sort of thing. And um, they basically asked them what they wanted to do when they left college, um, whether they were wanted to do further maths at A level or just at AS level and that sort of thing. We're really close to the star here so I'm trying to fade it down very quickly. And uh, that sort of thing and he said he didn't know where to look, whether to look at the head of department who was opposite him or whether to look at his teachers who were to the side of him and it felt a little bit more comfortable talking to his teachers obviously. But um, anyway they both um, were fine and they were both been apparently I'm going to get some sort of email saying they've chosen to do this and I've got to return it and say I am happy and I agree which they know what they're capable of it's what they've always wanted to do they always wanted to do further maths and um, their grades are doing well in all their subjects so I'm sure they'll you know they'll be fine with doing that extra subject so it's all good but um, yeah he uh, he said it was a bit scary but then he told me about it he was helping me cook tea and his brother was still getting organized and uh, when I asked his brother about it he just shrugged and went oh it's fine <laughs> so different but his brother isn't so chatty with kids other you know um, teenagers and things he, he he finds talking to adults more easier than talking to children so it's, they're so different. So anyway, they had that going on yesterday. As I say, yesterday when I'm recording this, they would have left by now. Well, left for the holidays, not left, left. And uh, they were advised they ought to do a little bit of work over the summer. But uh, my one son said he's going to do more than a little bit wants to get organized but I'm going to um I'm gonna say to them have a week off just chill and maybe we'll spend a bit of time just thinking about what you want to do and when and then you know because I thought it might be an idea for them to do some pre-reading um think about um anything they need to learn that they are struggling with to remember you know like sort of because they're doing science and maths it's sort of with maths it's just methodology it's hard you can't really remember it you have to practice it but maybe with the science if there's any um sort of equations that they need to learn that they want to start trying to learn or with their or facts as well different information you might need to know right we have gone all the way through our tunnel with the um dark indigo now we need a lighter blue i'm just having to move the tray of my pencils um let me have a look at what we've got i don't want a turquoise so that eliminates some of the blues i don't want the thalo blues either so we're looking more at the cobalt blues i'm thinking we need to get light quite quickly because we're quite near the stars already so what I'm going to do is try this, it might not work, is try going for the ultramarine. Sorry, I don't know where you are with regards to blur. And uh, try that. And then if it's too, if the transition of colour is too steep, we'll put a transitional colour on top after because we can do that. It's, uh, so I'm actually going to fill all of this space with the ultramarine and then have a look afterwards and decide whether I want to do anything else. I'm going to go over the indigo as well because I think that helps with the um, blending and for it to look as part of one. But I'm going to go all over here and what I may do is get another colour on top of just this bit but we'll see how it goes. I think it's nice just to lay, get some colour down there and then I can think about what I want to do. Now another idea I just thought of you could do with this 
is you could see we've got these dots you could add more dots in a yellow pen or something if you wanted a bit more to make it look sort of a bit more sparkly or glittery type thing I mean you could add sparkly or glittery pen but I mean just sort of plain dots if you want to add a few more so that's an idea maybe I need to just put another layer on here right by the edge and have less layers towards the middle I like that. I'm trying to go right to the edge of the stars. I'm not very good at um yeah, I either go too don't go far enough up the, to the item or I go over the line. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. And anyway, they've got they got two weeks left after this week. It's going so fast. I can't believe they've done a year. They settled in within a weeks. Well, almost immediately. But they had friends there from school, so that helped. But I think it was just more laid back. They had less classes, so less people to sort of get used to as well. You know, only four different teachers or lecturers, as they like to call them in their college, which I find very odd. I was associate lectures with university, not with a sixth form college. But anyway, that's what they like to be called. Um, so a bit harder here though, and then less towards here. Um, oh, I've got that itch on my leg again. Oh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't really need to know about that, do you? Um, so they settled in quickly, but it just seems to have flown by. I don't know if they felt the same. I think as we get older, the years fly by quicker and quicker. That's my experience. Although June, as a month, as it's June now for me, seems to come really slowly. So that's interesting. But um, as a year, it seems to come really fast. So, uh, but um, they're still doing well and enjoying it, and that's good. But we've been talking about university. They've got to fit out their application form for university over the summer holidays they've got to write a personal statement which has got to be between one and four thousand words it's long isn't it but um, I'm, I've got a lot of information I can advise them to put in it but um, my one son has been sent an, uh, a link to a page on how to fit it out so we'll have a good look at that together and decide what to put in it and then um, I can sort of help them with writing it as well. Being a freelance writer, I can write things very quickly. Um, a thousand words in less than an hour. So, particularly if it's not, if it's something I know what I'm writing about, if I don't have to research it. So that'll be okay. And then, um, get that done for them. They don't have to, um, they don't send it off. It's, they start it off and then now their tutors fill in a bit as well for them before they send it off. But they've got they can apply to up to five places, but they know exactly which one they want to go to and that they'll get the grades. I know that sounds a bit big headed, but the place they want to go to has a very low grade expectation compared with what their predicted grades are. And if they don't get the grades they can always repeat their year at college until they do. But I'm sure they will because um, the grades they need are two B's and a C. Now that, for me, was quite tricky when I did, I didn't do that well for my A-levels. But they are doing four, which will help them because they'll have an extra one. And I think they're predicted nearly all A's or A's and B's. So they should be able to fulfill that um, that easily really even if they don't do as well as predicted and they get all C's I think that would still be enough because they've got the four qualifications so it'd be fine so uh, that's that but they need to sort of think of other places to put on because it's like oh you have to put three and it's like that's really silly they want to go to a certain place if they don't get there, they're not going anywhere else. Why do they just have to 
it seems a waste of time just having to look and fill in details and things for somewhere they don't want to go to. But anyway, we'll just make some. I said, I'll oh, just put Cambridge or Oxford. <laughs> you, I don't think you can do that though because you have to have interviews and things like that. It's not the um, it's not straightforward. But uh, we'll see. Right, there is the first layer of blue. Now we can leave it just like that and just have it as that. But what I'm going to do is actually grab a white, a Prisma white, not a Poly white. I'm just going to sharpen it. I'm just cleaning the end off because the end's a bit blue. Although I know we're going to be colouring some blue. But what I'm going to do is around the edge of the stars, I'm going to use my Prisma white just to create a little lighter area like this. I'm going to do it around all the um, whatever they are <laughs> um, things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can do it all the way around. And it's slightly, it burnish, it blends it, makes it very smooth and uh, just lightens that area around it so that it sort of looks even brighter. That's my plan anyway. Going to do it around each of these as well. Oh, there's a train going by. I thought there were train strikes today. I didn't think the trains were running. Huh. Oh no, that maybe that was yesterday. I don't know. Anyway, luckily I don't rely on the train, so it doesn't. Um, didn't affect me. Did affect my sister. She had to um, um, get a lift to work, and then her husband had to go back home so he could give her daughter a lift to college. Well, I think today they were okay because um, she was going to walk home with someone, but uh, she doesn't like um, doing it on her own. If someone will do it with her, then she's happy. So, anyway, but she usually takes the train, my sister. But, uh, she, I think she likes the train. I used to. I used to take the train to work every day. It was uh, nice. You can just sit. And there was I. I did have a phone, but it was a dumb phone. I think. Well. It was the days before smartphones. So there was nothing to do with your phone except use it as a watch. You look at the time. Now what I'm going to do to sort of blend that together a little bit is to grab the, the lightest blue in this sort of range of blues. Just sharpening it and then I'll show you. This is the um, sky blue. <laughs> You'll have to believe me. 146. And I'm just going to go over and around this a little bit to sort of put it all together. And just eliminate some of that white paper. You don't have to do this bit. But we're nearly there. But I'm definitely going to add some sparkle. So uh, I think I'm going to get a... Now, you could just use any glitter pen. I think I'm going to use a gold one. My Sakura um, one, sparkly one, is good. But um, I think I'm going to get one with a gold base to it. I've got um, a castle art set of pens, so I'm going to use one of those. I couldn't, won't be able to tell you which one it is because um, um, they don't have any um, identifying names or numbers. So I'm going to nip next door in a minute and um, just swatch a few quickly so that I can pick the one that I think is nice. What I really am looking for is a gel because they've got they're a gel coloured gel pen is a gel that will be a darkish yellow but not orange okay so I'm just gonna go and do that now I'm happy with that colouring so I'm gonna go and get my pen bear with me I am back now with my glitter pen as you can see it's just castle arts um it's got this slightly greeny lid um I think it looks slightly neon green 
but uh, this is the one I've chosen. You can see it's quite a dark yellow gel. And I'm just going to go, oh, I'm going to go around everything. So I'm going to go around these, um, um, around the dots, the lines and the star. So I'm going to, I'm going to start this side and move across so that I don't smudge. I probably will smudge going this way, actually. And basically you cover the black line, the gel, and you get a sparkle, I hope. I'm just checking. I think I'm getting a sparkle. I'm at the wrong angle to see. I suspect you are as well. It's very sunny now. When I went out earlier, it was very dull. It was lovely. I had a very thin short sleeve t-shirt on and I was lovely and cool and didn't have to worry about a hat. I actually had a Mac with me because I thought it was going to rain. I don't think it's rained yet here but I think we have forecast thunderstorms. I don't know if that was yesterday evening or today but there's no sign of that and as I say the sun's it's sort of in and out. It's quite dark in the sky, black clouds so I think it's just finding small gaps here and there. Now when you're doing this um, glitter pen it may be hard for you to see whether you've missed any areas or not. It depends on the angle of your light and so what I'm going to do is when I've finished, obviously I've got a little way to go, um, I'm going to tip it into my light and just have a good look to see where I've, if there's any I've missed, which I suspect there will be. It's uh, sometimes the pen doesn't flow evenly and you've thought you were colouring it and it wasn't and that sort of thing. And because I can't really see the yellow because I've coloured it all in yellow, makes it a little bit trickier. But we'll get there. I'm going to do this bit before I do those little bits. And then hope if I have missed a bit, I'm going to be able to get there without smudging. And these last two bits. There we go. Now let's have a look. So I'm going to tip it up. Oh, I'm lift the book. Tip it up to the light. I'm tipping out for my purposes so I can see. Oh, there you can see a bit. There. It has all um, has come out okay. So that's good. So there is our first section. Now, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to be, like whether tomorrow is going to be another one from this page or whether I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Um, I will just see how my mood takes me and how what I think is doing well. But I my aim is to get all of these done fairly soon. So, But I've got a few other pages that I've got in mind as well. And I might just mix them up a bit if I think I want to and also because um, there's one two three four five six seven images here there'll be a um, planner page somewhere in the middle of this series as well but hopefully um, it will will get through it all and uh, and and give you um, plenty to uh, colour in ivy it's a lovely book really like it so it's fun to be back doing it again but there is that all done so I hope you enjoy the rest of your day um, and happy colouring!